getting back to the Senate and the serious business of uh, what, what's been going on. And actually, we have been doing a lot. Uh, one of the really wonderful things for me when I was first um, elected was Mitch McConnell asked me to join his leadership team. So I am like at the seat of the table uh, every uh, Monday or Tuesday whenever we come in at 5 o'clock with Hornin and Orrin Hatch and Barrasso and Thune and um, Portman and Deb Fisher and Mike Lee is there uh, talking about, you know, strategizing, listening to Senator McConnell and, you know, he's a man of few words, so you really want to make sure you're listening <laughs> and uh, to find out which, what direction we're going and how we're going to parse out which way we're going. So from that vantage point, it really gives me, I think, an added advantage moving into my week uh, to be able to see <laughs> Uh, where the senator wants to take us, the leadership wants to take us, and how we're going to work out differences. It's interesting to be at that table when all the turmoil was going on over on the House side. Uh, Roy Blunt is on that committee, too. So a lot of us on that leadership team have been in the House, so we understand the House, and it's a different place. But the folks that aren't, haven't had any House experience, they really don't understand how the House works or doesn't work in some cases. So uh, that's been a real... Uh, wonderful boost for us and, and for me in my, in my office and I think a real compliment to um, the Senator McConnell wanting to include a, a, a greater variety and also we have a big freshman class. Our freshman class is very close. We are going to be meeting here I think later this morning. We meet every two weeks. We've got a whole variety of great people there and uh, we really don't have any outliers in our freshman. You know there's always one where you're like I hope I don't have to sit next to him. But uh, we don't have that in this freshman class. We have some really great, great people, and, and we get along really well. So I'm, I'm pleased about that. I'm on EPW, and that's an interesting committee because you're either fighting like hell or you're kind of getting along. Uh, WERDA, we talked about it yesterday. We did the transportation bill. Those are the examples of getting along. And then whenever we get into clean power or any kind of clean water, or uh, Fish and Wildlife, or EPA, it just devolves into a, a pretty stark differences. And sometimes I look over at the other side at, you know, Bernie Sanders and Sheldon Whitehouse and Ed Markey and think to myself, where do they live? <laughs> because it's not where I live. It's not where Dave lives in Michigan. I mean, it, it, you know, it's just a dip, almost like, seems like two different worlds. But, uh, so the Supreme Court decision that came down a day and a half ago was a real eye-opener to me. I actually passed a bill out of EP, EPW called the ARENA Act that has the very issue in it that the Supreme Court, I think, is trying to address. And that's before we move forward on these enormous regulations where people are making huge economic decisions, <coughs> we're considering what the legality and the constitutionality of the president's uh, overreach into the regulatory, um, into the regulatory space. And you saw with the MATS rule, for those of you who are not in this space, it's a little technical, but in the MATS rule, a lot of our um, uh, elect, um, uh, utilities made decisions, economic decisions, that caused job loss, closing of power plants, and it comes back three years later and the Supreme Court says the administration overreached, but by that time the decisions had been made, the jobs had been lost. So hopefully this will help with this clean power plant. It's going to be interesting to see what the president does with his international agreement how he's going to, you know, rationalize this to the rest of the world. Well, I really don't have a plan now because my Supreme Court's basically saying I could possibly be in uh, unconstitutional grounds. So we're going to watch that. We did pass the Congressional Review Act, which the president did veto, which turned back this rule. So we've had a lot of action on that issue um, because it's really devastating our state. Just quickly, uh, we have the highest unemployment. We have uh, literally thousands of people losing their jobs every several months, over 10,000 miners in the last several years, 200 people last week, the, the rail people are cutting back. Uh, we're in a, our state budget's $355 million in the hole, we're cutting our uh, board of, boards of education. Uh, it's, it's a dire situation and it's, um, it's really hard to watch. I mean, you watch the, the automobile industry do the same thing, it is really hard to watch. And I think we can do it a better way, and that's what I've been fighting for, and I'm really well placed in my positions. I'm going to Alaska on um, Sunday for the first time for a field hearing with Senator Mikowski. We're going to go out to a, 
a drilling platform. We're going to go to a remote village. We're going to have the Secretary of the Energy with us to see some alternative energy. Really looking forward to that. I don't know how cold it's going to possibly be. Maybe maybe February might not be the best time, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be doing that and, and seeing firsthand some of the things we talk about that uh, really go on in Alaska. I've learned a lot about Alaska uh, serving with both uh, Lisa and then Dan Sullivan. Both do a good job. Uh, last year we did do a lot of, I think, really good things. When we got the dock fix done, which is something that's plagued us for ever since I've been in, and uh, we, uh, we were able to uh, reach some kind of budget resolution, not to everybody's liking, but at least it lets, as you've heard, lets the steam out. Uh, we passed the transportation bill, which for five years, which is a, a long-term achievement that I think um, is going to have great impact on all our states. We um, we did the Iran thing. We, we did the South Korean or North Korean sanctions just yesterday. I think it was unanimous. <coughs> so we are moving along, uh, and I think we've been able to overcome some of the dysfunction that occurred uh, over the last several years. So I, I'm pleased to see that. The contrast of you know the big joke in the House is, did the Senate ever do anything? I mean, they're sitting around in their wheelchairs and oxygen tanks and all those kinds of things. Yes, yes, the Senate does work, and I find it just incredibly honorable. I'll give you a little trivia. I got a report from CRS on women in, in the House and the Senate, uh, and one of the trivia issues that I've discovered is that there have only been three Republican women who have ever served in both the House and the Senate. So let's see who can get that. Olympia. Olympia. Mm -hmm. you. You. Me. No? Yes, whoever said that? Margaret Chase Smith. She served in the 40s in the House and then for a very, very long time in the Senate. So I'm thinking to myself, that's a pretty exclusive club to be one of three women in the history of our country to have ever been in both houses, to be the first woman elected from my state, which I'm extremely proud of, our state, because there's still another 24 states that haven't had a woman, uh, to be number 45 ever in the history of our country. I mean, come on girls, we got to get with it here. <laughs> That's not so good, but we're getting better. Uh, there's 20 there now, the most that have ever been. And we do have these dinners where the women all get together and, and we have, we get along, I think, relatively pretty well on most, except when Barbara Boxer's calling me a hack in committee. That kind of got me. After I had dinner with her the night before, I'm like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> but, um, I took it. And uh, so anyway, uh, I like it, and, and I've also used this analogy a couple times, and then I'll open up for questions because I know we're getting, getting close. I like in going from the House to the Senate in this way. It's like going from junior high to high school. Because in junior high, you don't want to go to high school because you've got all your friends, you know how to get around the building, you know the teachers. You, it's just so great in junior high. You're just so comfortable by the time you get to the you know, eighth or ninth grade, whatever junior high is here in middle school. And you look over high school, it's so intimidating. And, you, and they're older and they're, oh, I'm never going to know where I'm going. And then the first day you get in high school, you turn around and look at your junior high and you go, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like to be in the United States Senate. Um, and uh, I am... Terrifically grateful to the staff members that are here today, and Jim, I, I like the fact that you recognize them because they work very hard, as you know, and uh, we have difficult circumstances sometimes, and sometimes I'm probably not the easiest person to work for, maybe, and uh, like I'll go dark, and they're like, where is she? I don't know where she is. <laughs> um, I'm actually staring at my phone going, I'm not going to answer this. <laughs> no, no, I'd never do that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, thank you all for what you do for uh, all your respective uh, interests and uh, companies. I've seen many of you in different uh, forms, both politically and through the uh, legislative process. Uh, so thank you all very much, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you.